Hey, I'm Nick Von Brack, and this is The Record Podcast. Thanks for checking out this episode. For those of you who are not aware of what this podcast is about, this is a show where I talk to or I interview musicians and people in the music industry and talk about how they got into the industry, all the stories that they've had over the years, how we know each other, and just random other tangents. And uh, the past couple weeks, I've done some mini episodes talking about the live episode coming out, but this week is back to another interview episode. So uh, before I get into who I'm interviewing, just a quick rundown again on the live event. Uh, I know I've done multiple episodes and talked about this, but uh, you know I'm going to have to promote this thing up until the date. So you know you just got to sit there just for a minute here. But uh, November 19th this year, seven o'clock. It is a free event. It is the Record Podcast Live at Epic Deli in McHenry, Illinois. I'm going to be interviewing my band Dr. Manhattan on stage, and uh, we're going to raise money. Uh, for the Oasis Grays Lake Youth Center. And uh, again, this event is free, so the way we're raising money is by doing a silent auction, and we got a bunch of great uh, sponsors for that. Um, we also got live music from Grandma. If you're not familiar with her, go check her out. Uh, search Grandma, G-R-A-M-M-A-W. And uh, yeah, we're going to, like I said, we're going to do an interview, we're going to do a Q&A. We'll have the silent auction going on the whole time. And uh the uh, items from the sound auction are from our sponsors listed here and a big shout out to them big thank you for uh, for you know jumping in and doing this thing i certainly didn't expect uh, this many sponsors and i've gotten a good turnout so uh, let's uh, let's run through them slap ass creations run by one of my absolute best friends matt check uh, he has a great art company go check him out at slapasscreations.com or search for uh, his store on etsy again slap ass creations Greg's Guitar Lessons, uh, my buddy Greg Henkin doing Greg, doing his guitar lessons uh, online and in person in Grays Lake. Uh, go check them out, gregsguitarlessons.com. Wendigo Tea Company, this is Sky from Foxy Shazam, the keyboardist pianist of the band. Uh, first of all, if you're not familiar with Foxy Shazam, just stop this and go listen to their music because they're great. But uh, he has his own tea company that he came out with some years ago, and uh, they're going to be chipping in a... Uh, a little a little basket for the event so uh appreciate it big shout out to them go and search when to go tea company epic deli our uh, host venue of the event again this is just a fantastic uh, little restaurant in McHenry, illinois used to be in johnsburg illinois but now they've stepped up got a bigger shop and uh, they just do all kinds of great stuff uh, they have cool art in there they got a stage for shows and just sandwiches shakes drinks all kinds of unique stuff that uh just coming out of the mind of tyler wildy who I interviewed uh, earlier on in the podcast, so go check that out because we talk a lot about Epic Deli and that. But a uh, big shout-out to them. Thanks for uh, hosting the event and for, uh, I mean, he's doing a lot of stuff. He's going to have a gift certificate in there too, and uh, it's been super helpful and super kind about the whole thing. So big shout-out to Tyler and the crew there. Have Fun Records, my buddy Zach, who uh, helped put out the Dr. Manhattan Jam Dreams vinyl. He's uh, sending out a, a Have Fun Records starter pack with all kinds of goodies in it, so big shout-out to him. Dark Heart Tattoo in Crystal Lake. Thanks to Joe and Marky for chipping in a gift certificate for that. I can uh, attest to their quality. I've gotten a tattoo there and uh, just good dudes all around. So thanks to them. Red Door Studio. Uh, thanks to Gino Scarum who uh, was helping out with some uh, sound goodies for that. And uh, also uh, King of Hearts Tattoo, which is in Fox River Grove next to Red Door Studio. They're chipping in a gift certificate. Big shout out to them as well. The Oasis Grays Lake Youth Center, which is the uh, group that we're raising all the money for. Um, big shout out to them. I love that we're raising money for a good cause. It's a teen center that uh, kids can go to after school, just have a safe place to, to do their thing, play video games and hang out. And then on the weekends, they have shows, which uh, is a huge thing for me. Uh, growing up, being able to have a local venue to play shows at was a big formative part in my years and uh, for a lot of other people too. So. Uh, any chance to help out a uh, group that does that is uh, right up my alley. Um, another sponsor, Sophagus, the artist musician, Matt Angers of the band Dr. Manhattan, who I'll be interviewing at the podcast. This is his project. Uh, go and check out his music. Also, his art and his merchandise. Some really, really cool, unique stuff. Uh, you can find, uh, if you just search Sophagus, not esophagus, not esophagus, just Sophagus. Uh, but you can find his store at uh, sophagus.storeenvy.com. Uh, hair directors and Mundelein, big shout out to them. They're doing a few uh, hair product baskets for the event, which uh, you know you gotta you gotta you gotta look good. You gotta go out there and look clean in the world. So they're gonna help us out with that. 
and Siren Records in McHenry, Illinois. It's a really cool uh, shop in downtown McHenry, Illinois that has comics and all kinds of records and collectibles and good stuff in there. Uh, you should go through sometime. It's just uh, you could spend hours in there. They got all the good stuff. So uh, they tossed in a gift certificate for that, and a big shout-out to them. Uh, Catable Collectibles in Crystal Lake, Illinois, another shop with some records and collectibles. Big shout-out to them. They're going to have some good stuff for... Uh, for bidding on in the silent auction and 10 spot recording in Crystal Lake, Illinois is a good recording studio for uh, bands who are starting out and for people wanting to learn more about recording in general. Uh, they're going to have a, uh, an eight hour gift certificate to uh, record at the studio. So uh, that's, that's the list of all the sponsors. Also big shout out to Jake Levinson and Kevin Matesi who are helping out with sound and some tables uh, respectively. So uh, on to this episode, I got my buddy Adam Fisher from the bands Fear Before, Orbs, All Human, and uh, I'm sure more projects to come. But uh, we toured together in 2008 for the Stay Weird Tour, uh, which I've talked about on many random bits of episodes throughout uh, throughout this last year. But it was absolutely one of my favorite tours, and this is the guy who was responsible for it. He uh, kind of put it together, got the bands together on it, and uh, really made it, really made us feel at home. Really good guy. Um, but we talked about a lot. We uh, talked about music history. Or his music history, uh, the Stay Weird tour, lots of good stories from that, uh, some celebrity moments, having different roles in different bands, how that kind of all shakes out, coming out, which is huge, and we get into that, and uh, uh, I was, it was really gracious of him to talk about that experience and all the things around that for him, and a, a lot more. This is a, a, a lot of the episodes I've been trying to get to around an hour uh, recently just to keep it tight, but uh, this one, you know, this is just a, a homie from from way back when so we, we ended up going long and that's fine and uh, we had a lot of good laughs out of it so uh, big thanks to adam fisher for doing this thing i'm hoping to get more of the guys from uh not only fear before but that tour because there's just a lot of good stories and memories from it but uh let's just get right into it thanks again for uh, checking out the podcast and supporting it uh you can support it by going to facebook.com slash the record podcast uh instagram's the record podcast twitter's at the record podcast without the a uh, there's also the merch store, the recordpodcast.threadless.com. Got a new Cubs themed uh, shirts up for purchase. You know, got to support that home team for the World Series. So uh, go check them out. Uh, and uh, any of the money I get from that is just going to help uh, keep the podcast going. We got fees coming up, yearly fees, and uh, you know, upgrading the uh, the good audio goodies. So uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Let's go to my interview with Adam Fisher. Buddy. Yo. <laughs> What's up? Sorry, I had it all set up and then my computer went to sleep and then evidently that changes the way in which everything works. So um, I hate when things go to sleep. I know. I never want to sleep. <laughs> I always want to sleep. Speaking of sleep, did I just wake you up from some sleep? Uh no, I've no? been up You're good? for a while okay. actually. Yeah. Good. Date night, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> How did it all go? It's good. Yeah, nice. I made I made a badass meal. <laughs> Are you a good ass cook? No, no, <laughs> not at all. But it I just hear you. Happened. It happened to turn out good. What'd you make? Just stuffed shells. I mean, it's okay. Easy. Well, yeah. to me, someone who can't cook worth a dick, that sounds incredibly <laughs> difficult. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I do a few things. Okay. Okay. So that. So what else is going on, man? You're cooking, and uh, that's it. That's all you do now. Yeah, just, that's all I do. I just cook at home. I just have date nights. <laughs> Non-stop. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good life. <laughs> yeah, it's not so bad. <laughs> How you been, man? It's been a good minute. I know. I haven't talked to you in forever. Yeah. What's uh, been going on in this world of yours? Like a hundred bands and all kinds of crazy shit? I guess, yeah. I guess, <laughs> yeah. Where I are you mean, in the world? Uh stuck in long beach i guess stuck in long yeah. beach that doesn't sound well, like a bad place to be stuck yeah it's not that's pretty good <laughs> but yeah uh just doing music and 
making stuffed shells and <laughs> tindering and shit. It's a good life. I got yeah. I got confused because when I pulled up your Skype, it said Aurora, and I was like, wait, is he is he in Colorado <laughs> oh, or is shit. he in Cal-? But it must be just like where you signed up your account or something. Yeah. No, I haven't been in Aurora in a long time. Yeah, when did you move out to Long Beach? It, it just hit five years. Nice. Yeah. And how do you like it? I mean... Well, it's not to like, really. <laughs> it's like a melting pot, you know? Like, yeah. It's yeah. perfect for me. Like, everyone's just really open-minded. and um, There's, like, a decent music scene. Like, it kind of sucks being stuck between, um, like, Orange County and L.A. because bands don't really come through uh. Long Beach, like, often. But there's still a good music scene, and it's just, like, it's easy to walk down the street wearing a Muggsy Bogues jersey and skinny <laughs> jeans, you know, and, like, no one bats an eye. Like, sure. I, I, lo- I really do like it here. Too bad you and weren't there circa, see, like, I the 90s. Right by the beach. You could have been, oh, uh, yeah. you could have been uh, rocking the Sublime shirt every day all day. No, that's the worst part about Long Beach. <laughs> is sub- I hear Sublime, like, every day. <laughs> They're still proud of Sublime. They're still playing. <laughs> They're awesome. so proud of Sublime. <laughs> it's so bad. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's ridiculous. So so five, So five. what prompted moving out there? Just through a dart at a map? Or, like, you specifically wanted to go to Long Beach? Um, My friend was moving out here, and... I already had. I don't remember if you knew. Did did Richie do the tour with us? No. Okay. Well, he was already out here, and I needed to move. Like, I had some bad experiences in Colorado, and yeah. I was just like, like once I wasn't on tour, I was just restless, and I was like, well, I'm just gonna move. And my friend was moving out here, so I was like. Yeah, I'll go with you. Let's do it. <laughs> nice. You know, I was like, I like, I was thinking Portland, but she's like, oh, I'm going to Long Beach. I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> like, just floating cool. with the breeze. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't driven, I hadn't driven a car in, I think, two years, and I got my license back the day before I had to drive a U-Haul out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. <laughs> it was like that so oh yeah yeah well sweet and and you say you love it out there you're you're wearing your mugsy bogues jersey and you're just loving life oh yeah dude i got so many jerseys man <laughs> <laughs> like you barely have to like like i'm excited like it's too hot today like i'm excited for hoodie weather you yeah, know? Like, yeah. <laughs> i wish it would rain like it happened the other night. That was a treat. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, you can come swing through here. It's like 50 degrees right now, so you can come on oh, back. Fuck, that sounds awesome. <laughs> and you're married now, right? Yeah, married and a kid. A kid? A kid, man. Yeah, one-year-old. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I didn't even realize. Yeah, dude. yeah. Yeah, daughter. It has been a while. It has That's been. crazy. It has been a while. Yeah, man. Just out here What's in the birds. What's her name? Her name's Charlotte. Oh gosh, that's awesome, dude! <laughs> Thanks, man. That's yeah. so crazy. Yeah, yeah, just doing the dad thing, just kicking yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure time. you'd be a good dad. Ah, thanks, man. <laughs> the shit ain't easy. I'll tell you that. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm not good at well. Well, no, I I, I think everyone can do it to some degree, but I think it's just surprising, like the things that you think you're going to be good at and the things that you think are going to be shitty at, everything just like flips and you're like, Oh, all right. I see. I don't know anything. Yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about at all. <laughs> you, well, like we have to step up to the plate. Yeah. Know? Yeah, for sure. I, w- I would love to be a dad. Yeah. I, and yeah. I think, I think there's something with being a musician and being like someone who went on tour and like had to do a bunch of shit. I guess it depends on the kind of person you are on tour, but I feel like you, aren't the lazy kind of person. Like, I feel like when we were on tour together, you were always like sequencing and doing shit. You were never just chilling. So like being able to multitask and like constantly being busy, I think it kind of prepares you a little bit to be like always on your feet. Yeah. So I think, I think you'd be, I think you'd be ready for it. Like you'd be surprised how much that kind of stuff inadvertently prepares you to like handle all this shit. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, and I'm sure it throws things at you that's just like, you never expect it yeah. to. It's yeah. like, oh, shit, really? But, but, <laughs> like, that, but that lifestyle, I think kind of, because, I mean, you're used to, like, with no money, making everything work the best you can, like right. a burst tire or something, like, falls apart. You're just like, you kind of are just already humbled by all that shit. So you're like, oh, I mean, I'm already ready to get kicked in the ass for the rest of my life. Like, I've already had it for a few years, so <laughs> yeah. let's do it. So, it, yeah, I think it uh, that all kind of helped in a weird way. So it's uh, it's nice. It's good, though. That's awesome, man. Yeah, That's man. crazy. But yeah, tell we're, me. We're grown ass humans. Oh now. my god, it's weird. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> but tell tell me about uh post well, I want to hear the whole the whole spiel, but since I haven't talked to you, what what's been happening musically? I know you've had a few different projects like solo and full band. Like what what's been happening? Um, I you know, I I made the first all human record and put it out on a, a small label with friends out east and I think it was 2012 if the dogs won't speak and all the children eat and the horses leave this town tied to pieces of me I swear I didn't mean to kill the pilot please leave my limbs intact take some mercy on me and uh you know that was like i did it at home and then my buddy max and i did like the drums and stuff and his apartment but then i mean lately like i put out two records this year like we did the the orbs record that came out on Dan from Between the Buried and Me's label, but Equal Vision helped like with distribution and yeah. stuff. Don't say start over, Um, the all human record that I worked on for like four years, like it, it basically was like, st- I started writing it when I first moved to Long Beach and it finally came out. Um, but that's just digital. Like we don't like, we're trying to get it pressed, but yeah. it's, you know, it's hard. It's things are different yeah. these days, you know, yeah. did you be there to tell me that's not true? so like it's on spotify and all that stuff but yeah we just did like a short tour with i did a short tour with orbs um it was fun like i it's been so long that like there was one night um it was like nine shows but in brooklyn like the last song i could hear people singing over me oh, and shit. i was just like <laughs> you know it's like it brought me right back to like the first time i ever toured the east coast and like was like oh people know the words like yeah it's like getting it's like getting kicked in the stomach but in the best way possible <laughs> it's just like what like why like what are you what are you doing guys why yeah. like, <laughs> stop you know, i'm trying to awesome. i'm trying to like play this for one person i want you all to like enjoy this and be in this with me but it was so like I think I probably like stumbled back from the mic because I couldn't believe it. Yeah, you know. So, and that's I mean that's the beauty of like I mean I've been doing it for so many years like, yeah. but it still floors me like it it still just kicks my ass. I still like <laughs> am so grateful for yeah. it, you know, because no one has to listen to that shit. Right. No one needs <laughs> to hear me like whine about stuff, you know, like. <laughs> 
but like it's like the the best feeling ever when you connect in that way it's like all right for a moment nothing sucks yeah yeah so yeah and what do you i guess playing with have you wait so have you done shows or toured with all human uh we've done we did a short tour after the first record like okay like northwest um but it's kind of like a rotating lineup and yeah. now it's basically myself and brian from this band trophy scars like yeah um so we've only played one show together and but he lives in new jersey so it's just you know it's it's hard to to make things work but we played one show together and i mean we want to play more we want to write another record yeah um, we'll just see what happens i mean that record was if it wasn't for brian it wouldn't happen like i the way it did i wrote it mostly or i wrote it all here but i recorded it in my laundry room nice and then <laughs> he like facilitated doing bass and drums and piano and uh his brother's studio out there and so if it wasn't for him and john like from he he was also in trophy scars so like it wouldn't happen nice but we're trying to we're trying to like do stuff i mean we really just want to get it pressed too like it's one thing to have it on spotify and have it out but like i'd love to be able to like like our i'd love to be able to like put it on vinyl and give it to fans because yeah you know like it's not like we're big or anything or or have lots of fans, but like I'd like to the people that have followed and appreciate it, like I'd like to give them a physical copy, you know? Yeah. So Well you can always go um, the Kickstarter Indiegogo way if you want to go I can't that do route. That. No. <laughs> I can't no, I don't I can't get behind that. I don't yeah. I don't like it. It drives yeah. me crazy. Actually, I haven't actually like, seen I, a band really do it in a while because I feel like there was like two or three years where that's all I saw was bands doing Kickstarter. I mean, we are guilty of it. We did one, too. But there was like a solid one to two years where that's all I saw. And since for I feel like for a little while, I haven't seen really many like bands raising funds on Kickstarter in a while. But I, maybe I'm just not paying attention. Yeah, I well, there's ways it's I think I probably, I think I actually, I might have donated to when you guys did it, <laughs> but I, I can't do it for myself because yeah. I don't like, uh, I don't like asking for anything, yep. but then I saw bands and then like, I won't like name anyone, but take advantage of it. And yeah. I just like, I don't know, like we, we've raised money just through like digital sales and we printed shirts, you know, and yeah. you know, like moderately priced like we don't we don't like upsell stuff but um and we're trying to just get it off to do that like yeah. just to press it because we're gonna like um self-screen like the like i've already looked into to pressing the vinyl and like self-screening the the um the sleeves and stuff and, oh, okay nice you know hand numbering you know because i mean that's the stuff like like i don't collect vinyl i mean i love it but yeah um, the people that do and the people that really care about bands and they care about appreciate that kind of stuff, you know? And yeah. So we're just trying to figure it out. But yeah, I can't do like, <laughs> I mean, even fear before, like, like it was brought up like, Oh, let's like get a Kickstarter to do a new record. I'm like, man, yeah, I can't do it. Like I just, it's just not me. It's just not my personality. No, I hear it was, it was probably one of the parts about it. We didn't like was, is that part of it? Cause you don't, you don't want to have to do that. And I guess, depending on the situation, you may or may not have to. And if you, if, if we could have not gone that route, we definitely wouldn't have, but I think we were just like, we really want to put it on vinyl. Let's just see if this works. And then it ended up working. But yeah, no, we, I, I totally get that sentiment totally get it i'm not i'm not dissing it like like as a whole like right for you guys it no, makes no, sense no. you know but there's just people that take advantage of no, it no i agree yeah like fuck i want like nine thousand new dr manhattan records so. <laughs> <laughs> well that'll be that's actually the the kickstar i'm promoting on this uh, interview here we're doing uh the next nine thousand dr manhattan albums uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> We're gonna record for every day for the rest of our lives until we're dead, and then after. And uh, 
I blast you guys at my work so much. Ah, like, it's insane. You're a sweetheart. <laughs> that was like one of the most fun tours I've ever had. Okay, like, so I don't know if I've ever told you this. I've told other people in your band. Maybe I think maybe your band, but definitely in Heavy Heavy Lolo. And in our band, we've talked about it many times, but it was our favorite tour we've ever did. Like, yeah, the two tours we look at are that and Warp Tour, and we feel like those two aren't even really the same kind of thing. So when it comes to yeah. like bands on a tour together, the Stay Weird tour, absolutely, hands down. Dude, it was so fun. I mean, so much crazy shit happened on that tour. <laughs> and it true. was like, for me, like, we'd already been touring for like, what? That was 2008, right? Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. So we were already, like, we'd already been touring for like six years. And it was like, a, like, DIY funded, like, like, throwback to what it was like to, just start touring right but people already like knew who we were and stuff and so it was just like it was so fun and didn't we have wait did we have the taco bell things on like we had uh, taco bell maybe gift certificates i think we did <laughs> i think we had that like taco bell gift card thing and so we'd go and but you could get change from it it was like a flaw oh, nice. <laughs> in, in their system but yeah like it was so fun, like, playing house shows and yeah. just being, like, you know, like, it was so fun. Like, we, and, like, we just spent all the time together, you right. know? Like, it was so great. That was one of my favorite tours I've ever done, and I've done a lot of tours. Yeah. Like, that was, uh, do you remember in that, that house show, I think it was Thanksgiving, with the mattress and the mustard? Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like that was like unreal, dude. Yeah, that like, was. I, f I forgot that that was Thanksgiving. I, I remember. I definitely remember the 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 few things I remember are that the mattress. I remember people getting crowd surfed. I remember the singer Pierce the Veil. I think was there just like randomly because I think. No, no, no. That was. Oh, that, that was a different San Diego. One? Oh, okay. See, I mixed the those mattress up. was like in the south, and it it was all good. But then someone started spraying mustard all over the house, and then it wasn't good. <laughs> like, uh, perfect. But yeah, San Diego. Maybe there was a mattress in San Diego too, though. May I don't I, know. I, I think know people got body surfed in San my, Diego. There's there's pictures of myself and Matt in underwear <laughs> dancing after the show. Yeah, because we just put on dance music and started. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that being sounds dumb. Sounds pretty par for the course. I'm, yeah. I don't know if I ever asked you this and maybe, you know, at the time I obviously would remember better, but how did you even find out about us? Like that little bit, like the whole us even getting on that tour, I'm fuzzy on the details. Um Casey Oh of did course your record, Casey. <laughs> and <laughs> we so, have we have to thank him for like seventy five percent of our career. <laughs> <laughs> he he showed me he showed me um Big Chomper, yeah. Like when we were recording our last record, like Fear Before His Last Record, yeah. And I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and I became obsessed. I was obsessed with your record, dude. Uh. Like, you don't even know. Like, I was obsessed with that record, yeah. And I like. I remember listening to it in Canada, right? Because we went to Canada right after we recorded that record. And I was like showing it to like trophy scars and everyone. I was like, "This is." I'm like, I was obsessed. Dude. Like, I was, an, <laughs> I was a fanboy. Uh, and so we reached out, and I was just like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" Like, <laughs> I love that. Record. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, I play it at the bar. I play both your records at the or all and the EP. Like, I play everything at uh, the bar where I work. I, I don't know if I ever, yeah. I don't know if I ever told you this, but like. I feel like I'm sure we did on that tour at some point, but um, one the, we had a weird, well, our weird little connection. You know, I I go back and forth between you know life being a, a chaotic series of things happening with no purpose, and then all of a sudden things happen where you're like, okay, that's fucking weird because at this point in my life I did this and this. So that tour was one of those weird things because when we recorded our first EP before the self titled album came out. Our buddy Daniel recorded it, and he w w loved Fear Before. And I think he had, a th he I forget what shirt he had of the album, but it was the one where it's the album cover where they're running. There's two, a couple running on the beach. 
Oh, okay. So I think he had that shirt on. Like, he wore it the entire time we recorded and just constantly talked about you guys. At the time, we didn't know who you were. So I was like, oh, okay, this is sweet. So then as soon as I think you reached out to me or wh- however the contact worked, I texted Danny. I was like, you'll never fucking believe this. <laughs> and he's like, dude, that's so awesome, man. He's like, and, and we just, like, loved it. That had some weird connection to, like, the early days. Like, well, this is perfect. Like, why would this happen in a world? So It was so funny. Yeah, it was great. And... Just the, like, I think at first we were like, listen, we listened to, to you guys and we listened to Heavy Heavy Lolo and we're like, we don't really even know why they're asking us on this tour, but I mean, fuck <laughs> it, like, let's do it. And ended up just like, at, at least after the first show or first couple of shows, like, I did, like, it's so funny because I constantly see pictures from that tour and you can see like us, like we're like you and Heavy Heavy Lolo, you guys are like we're looking up to you so much. Like we start like dyeing our hair and cutting our hair. And we're like, we're like trying to become you guys so much. We're like, look at these guys. We love these guys. Like let's, uh, let's all be best friends. <laughs> dude. We did buzz that head on that tour. <laughs> oh my God. I remember what we did to poor Matt because you guys had to play in Florida. It was like yeah. Jacksonville. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I was such a, <laughs> antagonist <laughs> yeah but you had the perfect audience we were like go we were ready for anything like fuck it let's do it is it gonna be funny yeah let's do it like anything to make each other laugh we're in oh man that was so fun and i like i said i was obsessed with that record uh, i'm trying to think like i can almost place the city where i found out that you guys were gonna do that tour and i was just like fuck yeah and like dave loved the record you know like yeah. we just all loved it like it and was, that's, and that's and then that's what we always did too. Like we always just wanted to take out bands that we loved. You yeah. Know? Like. So. Yeah, it was yeah. it was absolutely hands down our favorite tour. Um, and it, it's funny. <laughs> so silly. It's it's funny too because um, so I did I interviewed Nick Newsham for this like a long time uh-huh. ago, and he he told me about the tour that or that you get you and Gatsby's you guys toured like a few times or like pretty often. Mm-hmm. And he told the story. I don't know if you heard that that interview, but he told the story of the time you guys went and played with Goldfinger. Do you, oh, do you remember this story? <laughs> <laughs> and he just told. He was laughing because I think initially he was saying that Gatsby's got asked, and then they like said they wouldn't do it unless you guys could play. And then it ended up being that you were you ended up being the favorite band of theirs, and not Gatsby. Yeah. <laughs> He courted us, dude. He took us to his house and like showed us his studio and shit. And yeah. we were like, like I think Dave still resents me because I was like, no, we're not gonna go that mainstream. <laughs> but like, yeah, he courted us and like it was so weird. And like they were calling Gatsby's like Fudge Packers and like it was so weird. Yeah, there was like he, I, I totally forgot about that night. Yeah, it was he, such a weird night. <laughs> He was, as soon as you said we were going to talk about this, like, or as I was driving around today, I was like, holy shit, we, I got to ask him about that because his side <laughs> yeah. of it was like completely high expectations and then just dashed because people were like yelling all kinds of hateful shit at them. And then oh, almost yeah. opposite for you guys, like, all right, we're going to do it. And all of a sudden, like, they love you guys. <laughs> well, it was so weird. And then did you, do you know that like, so we go to his place and he's like courting us and he, I mean, he seemed like a nice guy and. He, like, made us, like, Boca Burgers or whatever. But he was, like, housing some people. And then, like, a week later, it was on, uh, I don't even know what the program's called. But, uh, like, they were, like, these, like, activists that had, like, like, thrown red paint on some house and stuff. And, like, he was, like, (laughs) under suspicion. Like, Jesus. It was so weird. (laughs) Yeah, it was... And then he came out to, he even came out to Colorado. They played with um, Good Charlotte. And, like, he's he kind of, like, invited us on the stage and was like, hey. Like, we went on stage and he's like, this could be yours. Like, this was before he made our, like, second record, you know? Oh, okay. Oh, so it was, this is really like, early on. Yeah, he was like, he's like, hey, look at this. Look at all. Like, I mean, it was at Pepsi Stadium or whatever Jesus. it's called in Denver. And he's like, he basically was like, this could be yours, you know? 
And we were like, oh, no, <laughs> like, not into that. Yeah. Well, I'd rather be indie. <laughs> you that's, know? that's pretty tough to do, like, especially by a dude like that. And it's just like, look, look what I can give you. You're like, nah, <laughs> that's yeah. a pretty big set of balls on you guys. Like not everyone, every, there'd be a lot of people like, fuck it, we'll change, whatever, whatever music you want us to be, we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. That just wasn't us. I mean, and, and, and it's not like, I'm not trying to like say like, like, he was just doing what he does you right. know like i i love pop music and yeah. i like but it just wasn't us you yeah. know at the time and, but yeah it was pretty surreal like meeting good charlotte and like <laughs> seeing all these screaming fans and like yeah. going on this fancy bus it was like yeah it sounds pretty nice but <laughs> uh, i'd rather just like scream and kick dave for a half an hour <laughs> on stage <laughs> so he so funny that you should mention that because that was the other part of Nick's story was like, so you guys would tour and you'd have all this fun. And he's like, and, and Nick was saying, he's like, you know, and I'm watching Fear Before and like Adam's kicking Dave and they're like kicking each other's ass. And he's like, dude, I want to start doing that. So then he goes up to Bobby and kicks him. And Bobby goes, don't you ever fucking do that to me again. <laughs> dude. And I was dying yeah. laughing. I was like, that is perfect. It's not the It's not the healthiest relationship <laughs> to have with someone you have to like, spend every waking hour uh yeah. with in a van you know <laughs> like <laughs> it definitely came to a head and we definitely stopped at one point because <laughs> of that <laughs> like we kicked the shit out of each other for a while that's just like brothers wrestling him <laughs> like you don't do that like that's not healthy yeah so well, either um, that or I feel like I, I just assume it's completely healthy. Like some brothers just constantly wrestling and like poking each other in the eyes. Like, oh, you're just like, you're just family. You're just kicking each other's ass. <laughs> it started that way. <laughs> but, you know, eventually you're like, okay, we're grown ups and we're going to have back problems eventually. <laughs> like, let's be, let's be civil. So was that, uh, but, was that John Feldman thing? Was that like one of the bigger, the biggest, like weird celebrity, like, moments for fear before or like i can imagine that to be a fucking weird especially happening so early on for you guys like that's a pretty weird ass moment it was pretty weird like we were i mean we were definitely weirded out like yeah because we drove up i think he lives on mulholland drive or something and so like we we're immediately interested you yeah. know um and then i think they were pointing out other celebrities' houses, and so we're just like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> um, and that was weird, and it was, but it was fun. And, you know, like, we just kind of, he, we kind of, like, I don't know. To my, For me, I knew going in, like, this wasn't going to be what we're going to do. Oh, okay. But, but it was, it was cool. Like, it was fun. I think, like, well, I pissed next day next to dave grohl once and <laughs> like here in long beach like a couple of years ago and that was probably my biggest celebrity thing like and i really regret because we look we made eye contact and i just said hey and Mid, i really midstream. regret not saying like like cool dick bro like <laughs> that's all i want like because how would he react but i think the biggest uh like fear before celebrity thing well, we toured with so many bands I looked up to, so it's really hard to say. But right. I remember in 2003, we played um, Furnace Fest, and Andy from uh, Every Time I Die was looking at my pedals. And I was like, honestly, I was like, dude, can you just fuck off? Like, I'm already <laughs> nervous enough, you know? Like, <laughs> like, I just want you to fuck off. Like, I love your music. <laughs> like, leave me alone. And he's, like, asking me about pedals, and I was like dude like just get the fuck out of here and <laughs> first song the first song and he's watching from behind our amps and we're on the main stage because we had some in you know yeah. and i slip and fall on my back and i was like <laughs> and after that fuck was, you like, andy you know? <laughs> i was just like i was just like fuck this you know like yeah. i just started laughing i was like okay this is how it is <laughs> like this is what happens <laughs> but like i don't know like we've met so many like cool people yeah like like you know we got to tour zayo and like that was yeah like that's dave's, crazy you know like dave's favorite band growing up like, yeah
So everything's like everything starts struck. I mean, I kind of wish I had looked at Dave Grohl's dick because I'm curious. <laughs> I mean, how many other I opportunities really, are you gonna have? <laughs> I really wish I would have just said like, "Cool dick, bro." You know, like I imagine. Like that. I imagine it's got long hair like he does. Like it just looks like he Probably. does. <laughs> Yeah, it probably looks like Snuffle Up a <laughs> But like, yeah, he was like, he was just at a bar in Long Beach, and like, he took pictures with everybody, and like, he was just watching Big Business, who we toured with too. Like, that's why I was there. Like, nice. You know, it's just like, I mean, I get starstruck. I can't yeah. lie. Like, I, well, sure. I'm, I'm a dork, you know, but it's also like this kind of mutual, just like feeling of like ah fuck man yeah it's just cool life's cool you yeah. know like well if it makes you like, feel any better i have a i have i also have an andy from every time i die story and i'm a huge every oh, time shit. i die fan too so we were on warp tour 2008 and mm -hmm. we i think we were in canada and there's only there's only two canada dates and it was like toronto and saskatoon or something and i feel like it was in saskatoon because there was like fucking nobody there it's like the middle of nowhere no <laughs> one was like just there it was so vacant and so then we play and it's like even less people somehow there's even less than nobody there and um so there's, i don't know there's like 10 or 12 kids there and i see as we're like setting up i see andy walk up in the crowd like to watch us and i'm like fuck dude <laughs> like so, so i think already we, we had had maybe a couple of like random people watch where i was like this is pretty cool but this again this similarly to what you're saying like i love every time i die i cannot believe this so sure enough we start i don't even know how long into the set we start playing and then i look up he's already gone i was like oh fuck <laughs> i was like oh all right well can't win them all and then <clears throat> on that same tour another every time i die related thing we um say anything was on 2008 Warp Tour, and we we had already I think we had already played a couple of shows, and then we opened for them on this MySpace tour thing. It was them and Hello Goodbye, and we played like two or three shows for with them. And yeah, so we kind like I knew that Max knew us, and we kind of knew a couple of the other guys. But I think I don't even know if we had sent it. I don't know. But Jake, one of the guitarists, came up to Matt and said, "Hey, oh, I know Jake. Yeah, so he, he he's out. He lives here." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And Nick, I think it's his brother's Nick, the twins. Yeah, I'm not sure of his brother's name, but it is it is there. The, so it's the two of them. And yeah. one of them came up to for, first of all, one of them came up to to Matt and was like, "Hey, so Max's voice is like out, but we're still gonna play. We're gonna have all these like guest singers." First, he's like, "Can Matt sing a song? Like one of the songs?" <laughs> and naturally, we're fucking flipping out because you know we love saying anything too. So uh, we're like, "Okay, this is crazy." And then. I think something happened where somebody jumped in who was, you know, way bigger than us on Warp Tour and said that they could do it. And he's like, "I'm so sorry, but do you guys want to sing? Like, all of you come up and sing backups on a song." And it was, um, it was the song "Belt," which was on like their first album. Yeah, what say you? What say you? And your I don't know if you know say anything really like their music but like i don't really so th th that song is a big chorus where it's like let's say you and all your friends and it's like this big like group vocal so we're mm -hmm. we're like we already know the song we're like fuck yeah we'll do it so we're waiting on the side of the stage to do that and people singers from like you know all the bands on warp tour kind of like walking by or walking off stage just kind of looking at us like who the fuck are these like kids obviously these are kids from the crowd mm -hmm. who came up here like they're not in a band so uh, Keith Buckley's singer walks up past us and oh, is standing shit. in front of us. And so again, it's one of those like, oh, fuck me. Like, you know, I love this band. <laughs> yeah. Do I say something? He turns around, looks at all of us, kind of eyes us up, looks at Adam and goes, nice mustache, man, and walks off. <laughs> I was like, all right, I guess that's that then. <laughs> so my some, so awesome. so, some of my moments with some of my biggest, like like you said, like people you look up to, well, we, we opened up a show for Alkaline Trio Matt Skiba walked up to us, looked at us, and he's like, you guys were in that first band, right? Like, yeah. He's like, you're funny. And then he walked off. 
so I've had these moments where I'm like kind of heartbroken, but also like this is. I mean, I, I would have never met these people otherwise. So fuck it, it's cool. But yeah, dude, <laughs> I think I um I think I carded the singer from Hello Goodbye at my bar. Oh, nice. Because I didn't know it was him. Was like, <laughs> like I know that band obviously, yeah. but like I, I didn't know. And he's he lives just like down the street from me. Oh, okay. And I carded him, and and someone was like, "Oh, you just carded." I don't even know his name. Forrest. Like, I know that's his first name. The singer from Hello Goodbye. I was like, "Oh, well, it looks <laughs> young." <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah, I got to imagine like so. So with tours, some of the tours you guys run, like you, you said, Zayo. Like what? did the crowds for Zayo think you like we had, we have been on plenty of tours where people looked at us in the car, like what the fuck are you doing on this stage? Is that one of those for you where people were like into it and just, you know, um, Zayo was, I mean, it wasn't the worst one. Okay. Well, and we I got to hear the worst you know, one. <laughs> like I remember, um, like we did, uh, what was it called? It ran for a couple of, uh Sounds of the Underground. Oh, that like and thirty like, band tour? It it was like like twenty or thirty like I think it was like twenty bands and there Fuck. was like four tiers. Yeah. And I remember in Oklahoma, like we're getting like middle fingers <laughs> and Dave just puts up his finger. He's like, Oh, we're number one. We're number <laughs> one. You know, like because we, we got so used right, to it. Right, right. But then I saw someone uh doing like you know that like um pretending like they're putting a dick in their mouth and like you know pushing their cheek out with their tongue and they were looking right at me like mid-song and i was like really is this a threat i I don't know what's happening (laughs) well so i just like hit an open chord and just started doing like the you know the licking like a vagina <laughs> sign because i was like <laughs> what are you doing to me dude like why yeah like but i mean we got so like we toured with darkest hour and oh, red okay. cord and kylesa and we toured with so many metal bands like i was i mean that's why we i think we essentially got dropped by our agency because it was it was hard to pair us with yeah. anyone you know like we didn't really fit like i feel like we fit more with bands like you guys and like bear vs shark yeah and you know like it just it was just hard and then of course like i said i was hard-headed and we'd be like well we're gonna take out what bands we want you know and it wasn't always perfect yeah so but i mean i i don't like i honestly don't regret a thing yeah like I love what we did. I love what we experienced. Like, I love the friends I made. So, but yeah, like <laughs> sometimes we, I don't know. We, what was the band? Oh fuck. It was a guy from coal chamber and he had some band on that sounds of the underground thing. And they were chanting his name during our set. I'm like, really? Can we just like play 25 minutes? Right. Like, we'll get out of your way. You yeah. Know? Like, like we just want to play a few songs. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I, I mean, hey, we got so used to it. Right. You know, you get used to those nasty. Like, it doesn't make sense to me because, like, I don't go to an event and, like, I don't. I wouldn't yell nasty things right. at someone, but <laughs> I paid money, so fuck do. you. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, you don't sound just like this. So right. get the fuck out. But right. It doesn't it, like it's just not me. And plus, who would want to go to a show? Like, if you're going to a show to see like Pantera, do you really want to see like ten? If there are if there are like nine bands before, do you want to hear? By the time you get to Pantera, if you've heard nine other Panteras, like, do you re- is that yeah. really what you want your night to be? Like, don't you want something to be a little different, even even if you don't like yeah. it, just for the sake of making that all be a complete like show? I don't know. Yeah, like it's that's how I've always felt, you know. <clears throat> like, but I guess some people are just stupid. I mean, look <laughs> look at our <laughs> look at our fucking possible president sure. right now like some people are just stupid <laughs> so. so what you so we talked a lot about 
like the more recent days and the last days. How did you, how did Fear Before even like become a band? Like you said, it was lots of years of touring and you've done all these things, but I don't, I don't think I know like the origin story. Um, I had no friends, but I liked playing guitar. <laughs> Yeah, so where yeah, how did you start playing just music in general? Was it guitar? Was that your first instrument? I think recorder was my first instrument. <laughs> I think that's the first time someone said recorder, even though that's probably been everybody's first instrument. I learned the entire uh Lion book. Uh like or Lion Lion King. That's like awesome. I I read music, like I learned the whole Lion King book on recorder. <laughs> My poor parents. I feel so bad. Oh man! But uh, and then I had no friends in high school and freshman year. My sister was in gymnastics with Mike's sister. Okay. And much to his chagrin, his parents made him come over for a Thanksgiving party, <laughs> and then he got a bass, and we started like a pop punk band. What was that and band then, called? Please, there is a name to that band. Oh God, it's so bad. <laughs> Trust it's me, called, it was called Thirty Six Flip. See, that's a perfect like pop punk band. If you if you wouldn't have said what kind of music it was, I would have guessed that's a pop that's a pop punk band. Yeah, it was so <laughs> pop punk. Yeah, and then we became best friends, and then you know we just like obviously our music taste evolved, and yeah, you know we started fear before like it was not even gonna dave wasn't even gonna be in the band but he just we were like well can you scream and he was like yeah i was like okay (laughs) like (laughs) you know it was pretty simple and then we just had a passion for it so yeah it just kind of evolved you know and what was like in the early days because like you said you were just kind of putting this band together with your buddies like at what point, or do you remember like the first thing where it's like, oh shit, this is, this is real. <laughs> like this is legit. Or like, like people are like starting to come to the shows or like something, you know, people want to put this record out. Like what was like the early moment of that happening? Um, I think like one of the biggest things I can remember is that like Dan, who's now a, one of my great friends, but who's pretty much, like head A and R at E V R. Yeah. Like Equal Vision. Uh came to see our show in in New York at like our first East Coast tour and I was like, Really? And then <laughs> people knew the words. Oh yeah. And I was like like we talked about before, but I was just like, What the fuck is happening? <laughs> you know? Like it's like what is going on? Like yeah. Because I I have so much, like I have so much gratitude. Like I don't, I don't feel like I deserve anything that I've gotten. I feel like it's just a like a blessing, you know. Yeah. So I was just floored. I like couldn't believe it. And even like the first time we got to leave the state, I was like freaked out. I was like, yeah. this is just like too fun. Like I'm like with my friends making music screaming about i don't i don't even i couldn't even tell you what the first record's about at this point but like it's just like this is just awesome you know yeah. i'm like eating fast food and all that shit yeah but it was life. yeah i but but that that time that first east coast like new york show i was just like that hit me pretty hard yeah and what was the um what was like the first tour like bigger tour that you guys asked to be were asked to be on? Well, I mean, or like to you guys, not necessarily it has to be like a huge band, but like a band asked you to be on tour. And like this is awesome. I think I think the first one where I was like, oh wait, what was like Under Oath and Eighteen Visions? Damn. That's and a pretty like, good one. <laughs> yeah. And like, well, I probably shouldn't just close this, but. I can cut they, anything out you want. <laughs> well, like, I was in the van with someone and they were, were showing certain pictures. And I was like, oh, this is how bands behave? I was like really floored. I was like, because I was like, I don't think 
that's how we act. Like, I was like, <laughs> I don't think that's how we are. Yeah. But, like, that was, like, the the big one. Like, yeah. that was right after we recorded Art Damage. I oh, think. Okay. I think we left the studio after the second record and went straight to that tour. Because we did, like, 200, I think we did 269 shows that year. Damn. <laughs> and recorded the record. Like That's crazy. It was intense. Like, but what, yeah, I think that was the first big one. Was that under oath tour? Was that where they were like in their heyday? Like that? Uh, mm-hmm. Oh man, I can imagine the those shows song. were crazy. Yeah, up against a wall. Yeah, up against a wall or whatever. <laughs> I can imagine them headlining a tour. That would have, those have been some really big shows. Yeah, and 18 Visions was like had just released a record and I think had a deal with the WWF or something <laughs> like I don't know. That's crazy, man. Was that Yeah. Was that the biggest tour that you guys had ever done or ever did? No. No, no. Um jeez, what's the biggest tour we ever did? Or even like the uh, biggest show? We did that Norma Jean between the Buried and Me tour, but that was after we released a record that no one liked, which I still think is our best record. And that is? Um, Always Open Mouth. people not like that record i don't know that album fucking <laughs> rules <laughs> i love that right thank you i love that record it but may be my favorite one it's my favorite yeah. one but i don't know people i mean what could weird. they say about that album that they didn't like is it just like diehard old fans and it's like it's change i don't like change well when we released the first like we released lycanthropy it's like one of the tracks off the record yeah uh, the first comment was like, sounds like Power Man 5000. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said, thank you. Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like, what? <laughs> but um, I think that was maybe the biggest tour we did. We did play with like a few shows in the in Mexico with the used. Damn. They were like huge. But that, I, that huge. doesn't really count as a tour. St- uh, no, but I asked to like just big shows too. That. That's crazy. That that'd be like thousands and thousands of people. That's like just getting like catered with fruits he never knew existed <laughs> and then just going out and being like, Oh, fuck yeah. Like, yeah. Let's party. You yeah. Know? Like I don't know. Like I have so much like I'm always so grateful for that kind like Yeah. That's just a life experience, you know? Yeah. I could imagine and and what so those are all like just huge, cool tours and shows. Was there, like I said, us getting the Stay Weird tour was crazy because our buddy was like wore a shirt and it was like this whole thing. Did you have like an earlier like what's what's a good memory of like oh I used to f- like m- like I don't know I I looked up to this band a lot and then they asked us on tour or set or the singer was at one of our shows and said we were good or like do you have any us excluding Andy from Every Time I Die <laughs> watching your pedals? <laughs> um. Well, I mean, Zaya was was big for me, not yeah. as big as Dave, but uh, like between the Buried and me, I was a fan. Like, yeah. I'm not a huge metal guy. Yeah. But like after the tour we did with them, they asked me to sing on a track, and I I was like, whoa, wait, you mean Dave? Yeah. And they're, <laughs> they're like, they're like, no, we want you to sing. Like, come, and they flew me out, and I sang on a track, and that was like, that's awesome surreal you know and now i'm like in a band with one of those guys yeah 
he's one of my best buddies. Like that's that's pretty insane. And that stuff kind of like obviously it's cool to like meet up with like musicians you were into, but it's even cooler to become friends with them. Right. You know? And is like, that is that how Orbs kind of started? Was like that happening, and then just keeping in touch? Yeah he he sent me like demos that he'd worked on with um ashley and like i'm so naive he was like hey what would you do melodically to this like what <laughs> would you do and blah, blah blah and then finally he came to a show in cleveland we played and he's like dude we want you to sing on this stuff and i was like oh okay <laughs> like i don't i like fuck me i didn't know like <laughs> and so right yeah like we just we be like we were friends you know but i just i'm so naive and yeah i'm so stupid but uh now we have like new demos in the works and nice i mean touring with them was so fun this summer and it was just you know it's just weird life's weird man Life is weird <laughs> and life is what kind Very of band? What kind of bands do you guys play shows with or tour with with Orbs? Is it like metal? Is it more metal or no? Like the band we we uh, went on tour with this summer was like kind of like indie pop. Okay, and then <laughs> our last tour was more uh, a little more like shit. I'm so bad at genres this day, <laughs> like. Uh, I don't know, like kind of like sludgy, I yeah. guess. But no, we don't really like. I mean, every now and then there'll be like an opening band that's metal or something. There's always but... an opening band that's metal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Wherever you go, there's always yeah. one. Yeah. But no, it was it was fun, man. It was like, and we like, like I love playing shows. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. I got to swim in so many bodies of water. Like <laughs> we like we made we had a good time on this tour. Yeah. So that's I mean that's the joy of it and Yeah. You get to meet people and just be in new places. That's like I love playing music. I yeah. love it. And I love writing music, but I love traveling and I love jumping butt naked into a pond and like outside of boston you know like like it's the best what what would you i guess when you look at all three of those bands fear before orbs and all human like what do you what do you kind of see as like do they like fill different parts of like what you like about being a bands or what what do you kind of see as the like the differences or like how you separate them in your mind um, well, like all human, like I, it's, I mean, it's me, you know, like, yeah. like Brian's a big part of the drumming and production, but I can say everything I want to like it. I mean, there's like, even going back, like hints into who I was going to become, you yeah. know, five years later. Um, and I, I love it. Like I, it's a totally different animal yeah uh fear before is where i can just thrash and let dave be at like like the the center you know i still yeah. i i write i still write lyrics but you know for the most part i get to just like play guitar horribly of course <laughs> oh how and, dare you and be, <laughs> i will not allow you to say <laughs> such things and just be like like ridiculous and i mean i still have control over writing but it's more of a group thing yeah. and then orbs it's like oh here's this music sing over it and like when we first started i was like do i need to apologize for cussing or am i allowed to cuss <laughs> yeah but i just get to say whatever i want and like just go off the rails kind of and it's all just it's all different and i and i sing in like a different voice with orbs too like all humans are very like laid back kind of vocals yeah what orbs is like i'm gonna throw my voice out kind of vocals <laughs> you know so um and do you do you play guitar in orbs too or do you just sing 
I don't I don't write guitar, but live I play guitar. Okay. Would you ever yeah. want to be in a band where you don't play guitar and just sing, or is that too weird? Like, do you would you you feel better behind a guitar? It's so nice to hide behind a guitar. Yeah. However, I kind of was like, man, if I didn't have this guitar, like maybe <laughs> I could just run around and be a jackass, you know? Like, <laughs> but I don't know. I might look like the biggest goofball like <laughs> so but yeah i i i kind of would like to not play guitar yeah in orbs but that's just another person in the van <laughs> you yeah know? yeah that's true how many, how many people <laughs> but, are in that band uh five okay yeah we we have well it's basically dan and and ashley write everything and then I, you know, I write the vocals and melodies and stuff. Um, but she couldn't go on tour. And so we brought this dude over from the UK who was just a sweetheart. Like, it was like the coolest guy. And and then uh, Chuck plays bass and um, the guy that did drums on the record. But Dan even programs all the drums. Like, oh, wow. Okay. He's a maniac, dude. He's crazy. Well, you're pretty damn crazy at programming too. I feel like even <laughs> even just to stay weird to her, I feel I, I have a very distinct memory. I don't know if it was Louisiana or it was before one of the shows where you were backstage like reprogramming one of the intros so that it wouldn't be like exactly the like you were you're fucking around doing something <laughs> just for the show stuff. And I was like, damn, so you do all this stuff for the record and then like even for just like individual shows you're like making new shit i'm like that's that's a pretty crazy hustle you got going there man i'm just a weirdo (laughs) but it was awesome we loved (laughs) that was something that that tour watching you guys and and heavy heavy lolo do like the little intros and stuff we loved that shit it's like such it wasn't like it wasn't corny shit it was like really it was either funny stuff or like stuff that like sounded like perfectly got you like hyped up to hear the next song like it was I don't know. It was it was great. We loved we loved that side. We I think part of us kind of wanted to do something like that, but we just never really did. But we loved when bands could like pull that off. Well, well, thank you. I I mean, I love that shit. Like, yeah. I, and I love being a spectacle too. Like I don't want to like fall into the norm. I've never, you know, it's yeah. more fun. I mean, we wouldn't take out bands like Dr. Manhattan or Heavy Heavy <laughs> Lolo if I wanted That's to true. fall into the norm. That you is know? true. Like, like, you got to be weird. Well, stay good, weird. Good for us. Glad for us that uh, you decided <laughs> to stay weird and you didn't go and become the next Goldfinger or else we'd have never oh, had that God. awesome tour. Oh, God. No no hate on them. Though. Yeah. Like, no. Not at all. Just not. It wasn't for us. Yeah. And when... Oh. When so aside from that just being a crazy like situation, looking back, I mean you've had I mean that's that's a lot of bands and bands that have been able to do some really cool shit like in different kinds of genres and stuff. Like I mean you said before you don't have any regrets, but like I don't know that's a lot of years and a lot of stories and a lot of crazy shit. Like what do you what do you kind of just look back and think about all that? Like if you saw young young little whippersnapper Adam, what would you say to him as he's about to go on his first tour? Oh, I'd be like, definitely take that John Feldman contract. <laughs> <laughs> you don't uh, have to buy the generic things at <laughs> Ralph's anymore. <laughs> like, that's no, awesome. I, I would just, I would have been nicer. I was a little like, I was kind of a hothead, and yeah, um, I was very idealistic, which is good, you yeah. know. It's it to some degree, but. I would have been like, "Hey, man, calm down. Someday you're gonna be 32. You know, like, <laughs> like, just like, be cool." Yeah. Because I was a hothead and I had my ideals and, like, I mean, I wouldn't, I still wouldn't, obviously, do like that mainstream thing. But right. this is, it's not me. But I would have told myself to calm down. Yeah. And not be such a dick about it. <laughs> Well, I think that like, to me that just sounds like young band, young yeah. kind of band. Like you want to do what you want to do. You have a vision. Don't tell me otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. When I, I, I also would have said, "Don't bleach your hair, dude. Like <laughs> you're gonna go bald. It's in your genes. Like <laughs> don't bleach it. It's not helping." <laughs> 
but that that it's it is true too because there's at some point I want to get um I want to talk to different guys from like Vagrant about just like the label and our band and what they thought of us and if we were pains in the ass because my memory of it is like no we were willing to do anything and all this stuff but I also know there was times where they'd like pitch shirts or stuff like that and we were like nah we'll just do it like we don't like that like we want to do our thing and yeah and I wonder if like just us like not playing ball or maybe seeming difficult on little things made them just be like, yeah, we don't really want to like go the extra mile for this band. If they're kind of, kind of be pains in the ass about like little, little things. But to us, we were like, no, we just want to do cool shit. That's funny. And people will like, so it's, I just wonder how much that actually plays in or if it's just like, nah, that they really had nothing to do with anything. Uh, I think it does play in. Like, yeah. I mean, like I said before, like we got dropped by our agency and, when we did another one of my favorite tours where we picked the bands and it was Bear Rick Shark, Since by Man, and Fall of Troy. That's a pretty like, awesome tour. It was it was great. And Fall of Troy was like we didn't really know them at that time and I love those guys, but <laughs> yeah. um they were they were kind of like the bargaining chip, but before he wanted they wanted uh, gym class heroes to be the opening act, like really? opening for all those bands, you know? And like, now they're like the biggest band right. and like, we were a pain in the ass. Like, and eventually, you know, like people who like look at it as a business, which, you know, again, that's okay. It's not how I look at it, but you know, they got fed up, you know? Yeah. yeah. Which is fine. Like it's, some people look at music that way. I don't. Yeah. I look at it I look at it as an outlet and a joy and you know, I mean, I'd love to make money. I wish like every time someone even said the name Fear Before the March of Flames, I got a hundred dollars, but that's not <laughs> how it works. You that know? isn't like, how this works. I, I was yeah, glad to believe yeah. that is. Exactly. Like but yeah, so yeah, I mean, it just depends who you're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah, I could imagine, because, I mean, similarly, I mean, you guys had much greater and different success than we did, but a lot of the themes of just being like, you don't fit on this tour, like, you're doing this weird thing, you're a different kind of band, like, we ran into all that constantly, and it's 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 the same, it's the stuff that when it's not working it's a reason for people not to want to do stuff with you. But when it does work, they're like, Oh, look at this unique new thing. I found." like, and it's just like, where, where is that line? It's so like, it's such a thin line. I mean, to me, like Dr. Manhattan and Gatsby's American dream should be like the two biggest bands in the world. (laughs) You know, like to me, like that's the stuff that I'm like, this is brilliant. This is great. But, and when it doesn't, that doesn't happen that way i'm just like what the fuck went wrong (laughs) like i don't really understand it you know like because i that music to me is just it's great weird pop you know that like and i see other bands get big that i just don't i don't understand you know and uh but yeah like i don't know it's all it's i mean it's a weird world like it is certain things hit and certain things don't and i don't know then trump becomes president you know? <laughs> <laughs> trump becomes president and we ended up on some tour with jeffree star like times are weird man <laughs> oh, weird days yeah trump won't become president though don't worry about that <laughs> no I'm, I'm i'm hoping to god that's not the case but i look it's I ha- not gonna happen I have this framed picture of like all these different little tidbits from tours and in the like bottom kind of center of it is the stay weird poster. So it's, yeah. it's I, I look at it all the time. And I was like, man, look at this group of all like, cause all, you know, all, <laughs> all our heads are on it. Just looking and make these goofy faces. Like, look at that fucking bunch. Like they were in vans on the road, just terrorizing the country, just being the weirdest bunch of fucks. Oh yeah. I think I have that laminate somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so, we, we so were much goofy fun, as though. fuck. So much fun. God, I, I, never I remember expected... riding with you guys and like, <laughs> dude, so goofy. <laughs> I never would have expected that band to get us to that place. And I guess that's kind <laughs> of the whole point is like you expect one thing and that's not at all what yeah. happens. And 
it's weird. Yeah, life is weird, man. Like you said, you just you just gotta appreciate the experience. Yeah, like fuck, man, there was some goofy shit that happened <laughs> on the <that> tour. <laughs> Do you remember that San Diego house party? Like the ending, like no, how silly it got. No, it was like everyone in underwear and like. <laughs> We were just like jamming and yelling. I think you were playing drums. I mean, maybe I could it have was been. Goose. It might have been Goose. See, that's that's the thing is like, as much as or as little as I remember, it's hard for me to place where it was in it because it's like, oh yeah, that could have been that. Per- oh, that was that. Per- like it was just such a blur of people being goofy as hell. So all of it I remember is just surrounded by laughing my ass off and having the best time. So it was so ridiculous. Outside of. Louisiana, our stuff getting stolen and someone getting beat up. That was really the only downside of that tour, really. And even that ended up as like a goofy story. Oh, yeah. He hid it under the leaves. <laughs> That's right. Well, remember Alabama, though? No. The outside, like rainy, freezing cold where you're like dancing on someone to Eminem? No. <laughs> I don't remember that. You don't remember that? No. Where I got butt naked and put weed all over myself, <laughs> like, and took a picture. <laughs> They were like drug dealers. I don't know <laughs> if you can put this in your podcast. <laughs> they were definitely putting this in the podcast. I have zero memory of that happening. What? I have I, I have video of you dancing on someone, making fun of them, and I'm dan- just like laughing in the dancing background. Dancing on someone? What do you mean? Like someone's laying on the ground and I'm like jumping up and down on them? No, they're like watching the band and you're like behind them just being like, or they're listening oh, to Eminem. Was that... Was and that- yeah, that's a video because uh, I have that and it came up recently. It's a video where I'm like pretending to like beat the shit out of him. Oh yeah, 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 You're yeah. Like, like throwing fake punches. Yeah, yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so I'm that's the um, that was that outdoor show where we played like under like a tent or a canvas like yeah, sheet or at something. That drug dealers. Ah, uh, see, I don't see. So okay, so here's. <laughs> Here's the opposite side of that was that those are the things you remember for. I remember for Danny running around naked, which I guess is not really different than any of the other shows, but just like streaking through the crowd, running around naked. I remember that. And I remember, I don't know if we ever told you this, but we ended up getting a bunch of shit from uh, the singer at Chiodos because of, I don't, do you know this story at all? No. So, so I'll go, I'll just go through it quickly. Basically at that show, and so that tour, Andrew was wearing like an orange Chiodo shirt for like a lot of it. And I remember even like the guys in Heavy Lolo were like giving him shit for it. And he was just like, I don't, you know, whatever, man. Like, I like the shirt. I don't really care about the band, but we went on tour with them and whatever. So he he was a trooper. He got a lot of shit for wearing that shirt and he still, and he wore it. And there was that show, some of them were in the kitchen. It was, uh, it was Chris and, uh, Danny and like, all the guys in Dr. Manhattan except me, and then just random people from the party. And Danny was being held up, and he was doing this pose that, like, Craig Owens does, where he, like, holds his hands out, like, when he's lifted by his knees by the crowd and just looks like... Oh, God. Yeah. So he's doing that, and Chris is going, Yo, Craig, I love you, Craig. And whoever's recording is kind of going back and forth between the two. And it's about 30 seconds long, and it ends with the camera going to Craig, and Craig going, I love you, Craig. That's the whole video. Now... Andrew, Matt, and Adam are in the back. Andrew's wearing, I think, that shirt. And that's really the entirety of the video. And I think somebody posted on YouTube, it probably had three views. One of those views had to be either Craig himself or somebody from the band. Because we got a call when we got back from that tour from our manager being like, what did you do now? Like, what are you talking about? Like, I was in the the car with Jen, my now wife, girlfriend at the time. And I'm like... I don't even know what you're talking about. He's like, I'm sending you the link. Go watch this video. Chiodo saw it. They, they fucking, they're not going to bring you on tours anymore. And I, I had no idea what he's even talking about. And that's the whole entirety of the video. And I was like, what the <coughs> fuck are you talking about? Like that's, we weren't even saying anything. Like the guys are just in the background in the video, but that happened. And so for that reason, we are blacklisted. And the only tour we did with them, we only opened like, I don't know, three or four shows, not many at all. But evidently, we were blacklisted out of the business from there on out because of that video. So that was that show, that Alabama party oh show. It God. happened in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have so many opinions on that guy. <laughs> I have like I have stories about him. Like, oh, I. They. Uh, yeah, he's. Did you ever tour I mean, with those guys? He's never been directly like rude to me, but he's he's got issues, man. Yeah. Like, did you ever tour with them? 
Yeah. 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 So we so I interviewed for this. I interviewed Dakota Cole. I don't know if you know him. He's like a guitar tech. He tech yeah, for yeah. them a lot. Yeah, I, so I, I he was with Dropped Gorgeous. I toured with them. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So uh I interviewed him for this and we talked uh in length about his experiences <laughs> with that band and all the kind of crazy oh, yeah. shit he had to do. So yeah, yeah. It's uh He and I talked about it too. I oh, I'm I sure. mean like fuck it, I'll just tell you. Like <laughs> when we toured with them you know, he was cool. He was whatever. But I knew him back when they were living in like a tiny apartment and yeah. they were nothing. And we toured with him right at, right after we recorded Always Up in Mouth. And he like, one day he was in our van and he was drinking whiskey before he played, which he doesn't really do. Yeah, And he was like crying, like not crying, but like kind of just like, me and Dave were sitting there on either sides of him, and he's like, I'm just a joke, guys, huh? This uh, band's a joke. And Dave and I are just looking at each other like, nah, dude, no, nah, you're good. <laughs> oh, and then, man. like, I mean, you know that band Sounds of Animals Fighting? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got an offer, I mean, this was obviously years ago, Yeah. to be on, like, to be on the second record. Oh, nice, okay. And I was just like, not of Craig Owens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an asshole. Like, <laughs> fuck, this is gonna come back to bite me in the ass. No, but it's I was not. like, I was like, no. And our manager was like, well, you know, maybe you can do a song with Anthony Green. I was like, not of Craig Owens is on it. <laughs> like, I just don't have much respect for him. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. I don't. It, I mean, it all goes back to what we've talked about. Like, music is an outlet and an art form, and it's i don't think that's how he treats it you yeah. know so but yeah <sighs> he's i mean and I, and i don't i don't have any like i don't not like the well i don't want to hang out with him but, like, <laughs> i don't like not like the guy you know like yeah. whatever you're human life's yeah. hard yeah so yeah but uh-huh. yeah so i i i get what you're saying but, yeah that's one for us too at the time. I mean, not that we thought that touring with them was gonna make our career or anything, but we're like, they're a big band. They asked us open for them. This is sweet. And then, so then our manager and like booking agent, all these people like making a big deal about it. We're like, okay, I don't like. Are we bummed? Are we like? I don't know what this actually means. And it probably, I don't even know. It probably meant nothing. But like, it was just like, oh, so there's also this side of this world that's you know shitty and stupid. Yeah. I mean, that's always the way it goes, too. You're like, wait, should I be honored? Wait, should I be excited? Right. I don't fuck it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, that's how it always was. Yeah. Like, you just got an offer from such and such. And, like, oh, oh, cool. <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, it was, it was tough, too, for us because, like, we had offers that, like, we got that fell through. So, like, ones that we'd get excited about didn't pan out and then so we were just like oh well we'll not we'll never get excited now because this could be something <laughs> yeah. like is this real is this actually going to happen so yeah you kind of have to like curb your expectations about what you even want to be into <laughs> yeah oh uh, you know what i just remembered about you guys i just i totally forgot about this you did an acoustic like didn't you do a tour with Saves a Day? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where you played acoustic or something? No, they played acoustic. We they played, played acoustic. We played full band. <laughs> so you I can forgot. imagine how that was received. I forgot about that because I saw, I saw Saves a Day. I must have just missed you guys. But I remember being like, because Saves a Day is one of my favorite bands yeah. ever. Yeah. And I, I remember being like, oh, who's this, like, what the fuck is Dr. Manhattan, you know? <laughs> I think I just missed you guys. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, sorry, that just dawned on me. I was no. like, oh. No, and no. that's why Chris did your second record, right? Yep, yeah. He, yeah. Uh, I think they were looking for opening bands. Vagrant gave them gave him like Big Chomper and another song, and he liked it and asked us to be on the tour. And, it, I mean... It was a it was an awesome time. I think it was one of those ones where crowds like looked at us like, "Oh, we're here for an acoustic tour. What the fuck is this like band full of goofballs doing this music?" But at the same time, it ended up being a really yeah awesome relationship. He they like at the end of the tour, Chris and Dave 
bought Matt and Adam tuner pedals because they would just be tuned. They would tune to Andrew's <laughs> keyboard and <laughs> like, here, why don't you do this from now on? And like, they would constantly chuck us like food. They like, you know, they get green room food that they wouldn't even eat. We were like scrounging out of the garbage and like, he, they were they were super nice to us. And then we ended up playing a couple other shows like as a full ba- like full band with them. And yeah, he was he was always really cool to us and very nice. And it was because of that weird random series of events. But yeah. Dude, yeah. I would piss my pants if I met Chris Conley. Like, <laughs> I, I love that band. Well, that, well then you're They're really like one of my favorite bands. You're really not going to like this story then. I, I was <laughs> I was a couple of convert. I was I was basically and again, I've, I've, I think I've talked about this before on here, but I, I was almost the drummer for them. <laughs> what? Really? Well, as soon as I left Dr. Manhattan, it was a thing of like, I went to school, was starting to do stuff, like get my classes all lined up. And then Manny and Daraja left to be in glass job full time. And I texted Chris, I was like, Hey, if you need a fill in on a tour, let me know. So then they, two they do a co-highliner with newfound glory. He's like, it's mid February. I line it up with all my teachers to like be gone and they're totally cool with it. And then he's like, well, what if instead of doing this tour, you like join the band? And I was like, fuck. <laughs> and I, cause I just oh left the gosh. band and, and immediately my response was no, like without even thinking about it, because I was like, those three guys in Dr. Manhattan will fucking hate me. Like if I left, I left the band to not do this anymore. Like I, I didn't like, I didn't want to be gone. I wanted to like do this other stuff. So then if immediately I turn around and then go and tour with them, like, I, I think they would have understood, but I also think their immediate reaction would have been like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that and that would have, it would have killed me to do that. And then eventually it just ended up, I was like, I thought about it a lot and just like, you know, I, I don't think I should do this. I would love to do it. It'd be fun. But I, yeah, I don't, I think it's going to end up in screwing up a lot of stuff for me. So, it, but yeah, I've had, I've had some people Damn. be like, what the fuck were you thinking, man? Like you should have joined that band. I was like, I know, but you know, some things you just know you're not supposed to do. And in all fairness, they recorded Daybreak, I think right after that. So I would have done that album. And I listened to that album. I love that album. And I was like, okay, yeah. I think I was not meant to do this because I don't, I don't know what I would have, what would have happened, how that album probably wouldn't have changed all that much, but I love that album. So as much as I would have loved to play on it, I love listening to it and being like, you know what? Me not being in this band made that album better. <laughs> That's how I'm going to justify this to myself. <laughs> but, yeah. I guess if that works, but man, <laughs> I I love that. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, I love the last record that they did on EBR. Like, yeah. I love that band. Yeah. It's like one of my all-time favorites. Yeah. No, it's tough. <laughs> there, there are times <laughs> when I'm like, fuck, that would have been fun, but there's also times where I'm like, no, nah, it would have fucked up so many other things. But yeah, yeah. it's... uh. Again, life is weird. Puts you in weird situations. Life is so weird. <laughs> and how how is your weird life lately? Now that we're we've talked about all your musical stuff, is your everything's going good? Otherwise, yeah. yeah. I mean, I had date night. I yeah, you had date night. Made I think, I the stuffed shells were well received. Yeah. Um. Yeah, just I don't know, like working. And, yeah. I, I was up for another job, but I, I'm not going to get it. I'm yeah. underqualified. But <laughs> don't I'm sell yourself keep... short. No, no. I think they hired someone else. Um, but I'm trying to work in the like. It was a job for like um, uh, an association that helps getting homeless people reassimilated into oh, that's awesome. like, like society and like getting them housing. But I am underqualified, but I think I'm going to take some classes. And I really want to work with, actually, at-risk at youth. So, yeah. yeah, life's just life. and That's awesome, man. I get to see Bear vs. Shark on Sunday. I mean, Life is what weird. Else can... <laughs> yeah, like, what else? I bought tickets for a couple homies and myself. And it's like, yeah, we're, we're doing this. Like, yeah. we're going to party and go see them and... Dan from Equal Vision is going to be there. And you're just going to have this moment where you're looking fun. around and you're like, what year is this? What's happening? I know, right? <laughs> I mean, it's been 10 years. Like, I don't think the the singer, Mark, uh, I don't think he knows that I have his artwork tattooed on, like, a fourth of my torso. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he'll be like, Surprise. hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> this has happened. <laughs> but yeah, I can't wait. That's awesome. Yeah. Life's all right. Life's and I got right. my 
my dog and my tarantula. Yeah. You got your homies <laughs> at home. You're doing your thing. Yeah. Yeah. What's Actually, up? I need to go get crickets, I think. <laughs> but, yeah. life, life is good then, man. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. And and whether whether or not you want to talk about this, I don't care that if you do or don't. I just want to say that is awesome that you fucking you came out of the closet. That is fucking really cool, man. Like, oh, I'm so happy to talk about it. Like, I I just don't want to make that. Like, I don't want you to think like I want to make this a thing to like talk about. I'm just saying, like, just on a personal level, like I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, I <laughs> I've just I've I'm so happy for you. Like, how did you know? I th- well, I think you just po- I think you posted something on Instagram. Or- oh yeah, yeah. So that that was the only way I knew, and I was just like, dude, fuck yeah! Like, I don't want to. Yeah, we. I'm sure you talked raised about money. it. Like I, like I, so my my view on it is like, who the like fuck cares? Right. You know, like right. it's not really anyone's business. Like, right. I don't assume you're straight or you're gay. Like right. I don't. It's, but I am in a position where. You know, like I have a small like following, yeah. And if like, like one person that listens to Fear Before All Human or Orbs or whatever, um, is gay and struggling, like some young kid, you know, like m- maybe they'll be like, oh well, if he can do it, so right. can I, and and so like I, to me, it's it's not a big deal, and like I've like. I I've had no why well, I don't I really don't care what people think about it, you know? Like Well, I can't imagine and, and, the bands and like, things you've done in your life. I don't think you give a shit about what people think anyways. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Like this is just another like, thing. Where I'm like, "Fuck yeah, man. You you just do whatever the fuck you want and I love that." Yeah, I mean, it's and it's and it's not like I chose it. Like when I finally started dating guys, I was like, "Oh, this is why people fall in love." You yeah. know, this is why I, people like want to be around other people like, yeah. it wasn't like it's not like i was it's not a choice and anyone who says it is is i mean you can like you could choose to go like kiss a guy i guess but yeah being gay being home like i don't even like the word homosexual but <laughs> it's not it's not a choice like, right it everything felt normal once i started seeing guys but anyways like you know like we raised I didn't want to come out, but when that Orlando thing happened, like we raised a bunch of money for like the center down there, you know, That's by awesome. releasing a, a track, like, and I don't know. I'm as much as I, I, I consider myself antisocial. I love people. Like, yeah, I want people to be happy and I don't believe in discrimination or yeah. racism. So it's like, it's one of those things like it's no one's business. However, it's a responsibility. I think I hold, you know, like, yeah. And so like, yeah, I'm totally open about it. Like well, I, I don't just, hide it. I just like, I love that. That's like you said, like you, if I was in your position, I, I'd, I'd probably feel the same struggle. Like I don't like, no one needs to know about this shit. I don't give a shit that people know, but then something like that happens and you're like, okay, I, I could not say anything and that's fine. Or I could, and affect this in this way or let some kid out there listens to my music feel this way about like feel okay about things. So it is like, I, yeah, I, I think I, I just, I, I feel very similar feelings of what you just said. Like if I was in those shoes, I'd be like, I'd be thinking the same exact things you would be. So it's, I think either way you, you like, no one needs to know about it. It's your own personal shit, but like, it's cool that you were able to do something for that like just by putting a song out and getting some attention to it it's really awesome thanks man yeah i mean it's just a responsibility if i can help one person you yeah know? like everyone deserves to be happy well not everyone there's some pretty <laughs> shitty people but <laughs> like i don't want trump to be happy no like, <laughs> no have i have i mentioned trump and how much i <laughs> have dislike him in this interview I, like <laughs> I, I have a buddy who is like um we met him on tour he's from he was from new york just this you know one of those guys that doesn't play in a band but you meet at a, one of your shows and you end up becoming like a lifelong friend with and he mm-hmm. he's really smart in that way like he knows politics and shit and, and i didn't even know this really but he so he he'll post some stuff political and otherwise but 
he was he was saying something about as soon as this election's done, this is a lot of this a lot of this kind of posturing and shit he's saying is to set up for he's gonna have his own like TV network or Trump TV or some channel. So this is all like leading to that anyways. And I was just like, of course it fucking is. Like this isn't even <coughs> about any of this. Like he's yeah. gonna turn this into some other TV show and he's gonna be next like you know right right after the kkk hour or some shit like it's gonna just yeah it's gonna be on some hate network so it's he's a businessman that's right, all he is right and he's selfish and mean and hateful and i mean and not to get too political sure. i'm not the, the hugest fan of hillary either but right. like if we have to choose you know right. like at least she doesn't hate people. Right. She might be a bit of a liar, but she doesn't hate people like he does. Right. I just don't understand. Like, I don't understand hate. I don't. No, I don't get it either. I don't really get it. Like, I don't look at someone and immediately see, like, race right. or, you know, like, there's, like, whatever sex they are. Or, like, I I don't I don't care. Like, right. I, I just see a person and I'm like, are you nice? Oh, cool. <laughs> you know, yeah, just don't like, be a dick. I don't care who you are yeah, like, or what you're about. Just be nice. Just be nice exactly. to other people. Exactly. Like, and I, I deal with it every single night at the bar, you right. know, like where I work. I'm like, I don't like see anything other than a person who's maybe going to like be nice to me or who's not, you yeah. know? And when you're not, then I'm going to not like you no matter like who you fuck or what color you are, or, like, what you believe in religiously, like, like, it's, it's just, that's, it doesn't, I can't fathom it, I don't have that capacity for hate, you know? Yeah. So. And you think, I think the biggest surprise to me is, like, oh, it's 2016, like, this, this is a, you know, an up-and-coming progressive age now, but then you see some of these things, some of these rallies and some of the cities say like, Oh no, we're still in the sixties. Like we haven't, we haven't, we haven't progressed at all. (laughs) It's insane. Like I just, I don't get it. Like, like I just don't even, and like, I'm going to get in so much trouble (laughs) because I haven't talked to my grandma in a few months (laughs) because she supports Trump Uh, and I love her. I love her. Yeah. But if she knew I was gay, oh my gosh, <laughs> no way! And if Granny, she knew, like, the, I see people of like, like if I date like black men, oh yeah. my gosh, like I'm <laughs> just like out of the family. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I love her to death, but yeah. it's like I, I just don't understand that. That's not yeah. how the world should work, like, right? Like it's fine. Believe whatever you want. Believe in the fucking spaghetti monster <laughs> just be nice to people like right. i don't care you know like just don't like hurt anyone yeah i think Sorry, i'm on a tangent no. i think about it all the time though that's a good one that's a good that's a good message to end on be don't be a dick and just you know don't hurt people <laughs> yeah. just be just just be nice just treat people kind yeah it's that simple <laughs> you'd think that would be a notion that everyone is just like ready to go with but Right. You're surprised how many people are just like, oh, you're just filled with hate. Like, it's going to be okay. Just because your dad's a dick, you don't have to be a dick to everybody in the world. (laughs) Like, we're going to be okay. Yeah. But you're one of the good ones, at least. So for all the, for the (laughs) 10 dicks out there, there's one of you going out there being kind to people and reminding everyone that it is going to be okay, even though there's idiots too. So you should, you should be okay. Like, we're in a, a position where no matter what happens, like I, I Hillary's going to win, but even with that, I think like because of all the shootings and yeah, like there's a, it's a turning point yeah. and some people argue against that, but I, I think it's true Yeah, because it is more accessible into people, people like you and I, like we're like, Oh, well, yeah, this has been going on for a long time and yeah. we pay attention, but now it's reaching like younger people and people who don't pay attention and right. it's not going to stand. So well, let's know. feel good. Let's feel good about the world and about people. <laughs> I'm, I feel positive. Good. I'm positive about where it's going. Good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. And yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear so many good things are going on with you and you're just happy and loving life. Hell yeah. I'm, yeah, dude. I can't believe you have a kid. It's crazy, <laughs> man. 
Yeah, man, life's weird. I'll uh, I'll text you. I'll text you a picture of her. That's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, cool. I'd love to. See it. <laughs> That's so crazy. Well, I'm 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 glad we got to catch up, man. This is long overdue. Me too. And I'm 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 just so happy, so happy for you. Everything's going well, and you're just just chugging along, doing great. Still putting out music. I will love that. <laughs> and if if you come to Chicago again, I'm gonna fucking bust my ass to come and see you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But take care oh, well. of your take care of Come yourself. Come to Long Beach. Oh, I wish. It's like ninety <laughs> degrees today, dude. <laughs> no, I'm stuck in this fifty degree stuff. Remember, this is my this is my spot here. Yeah. Well, take take care of yourself and your dog and your tarantula, man. <laughs> All right. And good luck with those dates and those stuffed shells. They sound delicious. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> good talking to you, buddy. I love you. Homie. Love you, man. See ya. Bye. X Chroma. It's apparent my parents wanted a girl, but they got a girlish boy. Extra chromosome. There's breasts where my chest was, these pink fleshy masses have made themselves out.